Good morning, Koi Copter 101 here. What I got for you today is a review of the new MJX RC X601H. Now the 601H is a follow-on to the X600 uh, hexacopter, but what it includes is altitude hold. That's what the H stands for in its name. Um, I don't know how H fits with altitude hold, but uh, that's what it is. So the, again, this is a altitude hold upgrade to the 600, MJX600. It also has FPV. 5.8 or not 5.8 gigahertz I'm sorry uh, Wi-Fi FPV it would be nice if it was 5.8 gigahertz but uh, to keep costs down low it's a Wi-Fi system which means you use your own cell phone in the uh, with the uh, rece as the receiver of the FPV video signal and that's what we'll be doing here shortly let's take a closer look at the quadcopter the design of the quadcopter appears identical to the previous X600 series uh, with the exception is that it now includes altitude old and it has this uh, Wi-Fi FPV camera. Uh, the lens of the camera can be tilted up and down, but it's kind of hard to do. You have to push a pencil or something in there to get in there. Uh, it was initially pointed very far downward on my screen or on my uh, particular camera, but I took a pencil and moved it up so it would get a reasonable view from the camera. Uh, the battery this uses is a 7.4 volt battery. Uh, I believe it's, I'll put the milliamp hour up here lately, but I keep the battery door closed because I don't want it to pop, pop open. And also, uh, this, they provide you with this nice big hole in the back of the quadcopter so you can dangle the wires out and keep the battery installed instead of pulling it out by its wires. And you can also charge it while it's still within the quadcopter. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but I do it. Um, the quadcopter, or the hexacopter, also includes an on-off switch on top, which is great. I like that feature. Um, other than that, very sleek, just like its predecessor, the X600. Let's go over the transmitter system. Since this is altitude hold, it's kind of a complex system on this quadcopter. Um, I had to label it very heavily how everything works. But uh, you can enter headless mode or one key return by pressing these buttons here repeatedly. You can turn off the lights of this quadcopter by a long press of this button. You can also... Um, Headless mode, one key return, and lights. You can activate uh, takeoff and landing by a quick press of this button. Initial press of this button as a takeoff, and if you want it to automatically land, you press this button one more time. You can also switch between different modes, modes one through four, by a long press of this button. Um, the two flips, you press this button here and tell it which direction to flip. Uh, to change the rates from beginner to intermediate to expert, you press this button here. To do an emergency stop, say you crash land and the, the quadcopter is still running, you bring the, both switches down and out, and that will stop the rotors of the quadcopter. To calibrate the gyros, it's down and to the right. Um, and that, I believe, is about it. Well, let me put on uh, one other thing I forgot to mention about this quadcopter. It can be either controlled through this controller or through the um, MJX UFO app, which I'll be uh, demonstrating here shortly. Uh, with that in mind, it also has a, a feature where you can draw using your app to tell it to go forward, right, left, you know, a pre-programmed route, and it'll try to do such. If I have time today, I'll try to demonstrate that. Let's go for a flight on the MJX X601H and see how it performs. Hope you enjoy this flight. Well, as you can see on my screen here, I am connected to the MJX H98D0 quadcopter. Uh, via the screen. But when I go to the app and select MJXH app and select monitor, I get a blank screen. But um, with that in mind, I'm going to continue on. We're just going to demonstrate its flight abilities. Uh, for some reason, the camera does not seem to be, or this actually, this app here does not seem to want to cooperate today. So again, we're going to do a takeoff here, pressing a quick takeoff button. And actually all it does is enter into uh, idle, but you can increase throttle and it will take off. Let's see its altitude hold ability. Bringing it in close, I am not touching the throttle. Notice that the throttle is centered. It needs a little forward trim. A little more forward trim. And actually does a very good job of altitude hold, as you can see here. 
just drifting around with the wind. And more or less you can fly it <laughs> by the trim buttons alone. This is very cool. I just wish that the app was working. <laughs> Let's take it around. Flying around the area. Now my app might be defective, I don't know. Or my camera might be defective. Okay, as I give it forward throttle, it drops a little bit. Still maintaining altitude. Let's do a, uh, let's take the, check the one headless mode out first. And I, am I in headless mode? Not yet. I think that was one key return. Let's bring it over here and see if it'll enter headless mode. Still without altitude, hold on. One button, two press of the button, one press of the button, the lights go out, two press of the button, the lights come on. So, oh yeah, that just turns off the lights. So the lights are off. Let's enter headless mode with a long press. And we are in headless mode now, lights are blinking. Forward, pulling back, pushing to the right. Headless mode is working. How about one key return? Does it do one key return? Let's send it out. Right about there. And another long press of this headless mode button. Or maybe it enter headless mode then you do a quick oh yeah okay so you gotta be in headless mode then you do a quick press and it will return to you let's demonstrate that again we'll send it back out in headless mode right about there very easy to fly this one folks by the way because of that um, altitude hold but let's do the one key return pressing and here it comes back again So this works very well. <laughs> Keep it away from my dog though. Still in headless mode. Okay, let's do demonstrate a flip. Let's take it up a little bit higher to do such though. Again, the altitude hold and this works surprisingly well. Okay, flip it. Flip button. Oh, let's come out of headless mode and see if that'll help. Headless mode off. You gotta hold the flip button down, folks. Let's bring it over closer so you see that. And it does cheater flips, so we can do that closer to the ground. What I mean by cheater flips, flying, or who coined that? Frequent flyer coined that term. It um, gives a little altitude boost before it does a flip. Let's do that again. See? It does them very easily. So. Good flipper. Okay, let's try a higher rate. Only beginner and expert are available. So let's fly it around an expert rate. We'll go down here. Nice smooth flyer, folks. Now I'm not going to do the test where it flies into the uh, net down there because these motors do not shut, shut off and I want to show you that. You're going to have to manually shut these off when you crash or come to landing with that emergency stop. So let me show that. We're going to do a landing from right about there. Let's press the land button. Um, had this mode. Oh no, this is the land button. That was the lights button. Let's bring you back over here again. Land button. should be landing right now but boy is that landing slow let's bring it closer in while it's doing its landing land okay maybe it's a long press to get a land <laughs> I forgot long press no I just entered mode 4 long press again mode 1 Long press again, mode three, long press again. 
Long press again. Low two. Okay. I guess it's still doing it. Landing? Well, let's just land it. <laughs> that shut it off here, folks. Pulled down that stick. <coughs> that landed it very quickly. Let's try that again. Do we got any more power left? Yeah, we do. Taking it back up again. So if you pull down that stick rapidly, it will drop. Now let's do a man or an automatic landing one more time. Well, I don't know about the automatic landing. It does that when you put it automatic landing, so I'm gonna slowly land it. Bring it down and Again, quick stop. Remember, always do an emergency stop to shut off those blades when, when you land. And my app is still not showing any video from that. Let me double check one more time that we are connected. On my Wi-Fi. We are connected. Just not getting any video from that camera. And I check, double check the plug. So there's either something wrong with the camera or something wrong with the app. It does not want to show video. So let's take off one more time. Very smooth. Very good. The altitude hole works very well. Um, the landing, automatic landing, doesn't work very well. <laughs> but uh, let's fly it around some more. We'll go again to high rate. Very smooth flyer. I hear a big airplane coming by. Up high. Hold on, folks. Three, two, one. Okay, that big noisy airplane flew by is gone. Uh, let's go again. We're going to start up into idle, take off right away. Just its altitude right about there. And again, let's fly it around the field. Very smooth. It's a shame that the camera's not working. You know, that happens. You can get a defective camera. But very smooth. The altitude hole works very well on this. Um, does flips very well. Automatic landing is not so well. Let me try it one more time. Land. This time it seems to be doing it. Once it touches down. Oh, I uh, when it's doing an automatic landing, you don't want to touch the pitch roll stick. That, that appears to be the issue. Wait, wait. Okay, emergency shut off. There you go. It did an automatic landing. <laughs> Let's do that again. Picking it up. Going around a bit. Let's try that automatic landing one more time. Ready, folks? Pressing the automatic landing. You gotta maintain control of it as, as it's landing. And remember, emergency stop as soon as it touches down. There, that was the automatic landing. I'd rather do it manually to tell you the truth. <laughs> Take off again. Can you do it that way? No. You gotta use the button. Okay, still don't see blinking lights on this yet. So you get a lot of flight time out of it, obviously. I think I'm still in expert rate. How about acrobatics? 
<laughs> kind of. <laughs> Would have recommended it. With this altitude hold, it's not as nimble. Obviously. Coming down a little lower. How's that? <laughs> Coming by again. How's that? There you go. Still has power. Flies for a good long time. Light storm blinking. Let me see if I can. No. Again, the app's not working for some reason. I had a picture there for about 20 seconds and then the picture went blank and I don't know what the issue was. I think the lights are on now. Let's see what happens when the uh, battery went, runs out. Does it drop or does it land itself? I'm going to come a little closer to the ground so it don't break. But we'll fly it until the battery wears out. I think it lands itself. Because it's getting a little low. Well, maybe not. Take it up. No, I'm giving it throttle. It doesn't want to go up. <laughs> it lands itself, which is good. So throttle off. So my thoughts. Yeah, the altitude hold in this works very well. It's nice, smooth flyer. It should work well if you get one with a good camera. <laughs> Unfortunately, my camera or this app doesn't seem to want to work with it. So hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101 signing out. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and I have another part of the review of the MJX RC um, X601H. This is the altitude hold model. Um, I previously did a review where I uh, attempted to use its controller, and I did use its controller to fly this, and we discovered that this, yes, the altitude hold works very well on this, but I didn't get a chance to demonstrate its video ability, and I didn't get a chance to demonstrate its ability to be flown with your phone. And that's what I'm going to do today. We're going to use the app to control the quadcopter and also to record video from the quadcopter. Um, simply just turn on the quadcopter. And I previously, before this flight, I had linked up my phone uh, via Wi-Fi to the uh, quadcopter using the app before I even came out here. And it's very important to do that so that you won't have any problems out in the field linking up with your quadcopter. Now we are going to double verify that I'm going to look in my Wi-Fi app and make sure that I am connected. And I am connected. And we had a nice overcast day here. Now if the sun comes out, just as I want to demonstrate the app for this. Okay, and i got to find that app, which is M the MJXH app. And we're going to select control. And I do see signal from the quadcopter. Now with this control app, you can actually fly this. Here, I'm going to start the video first off. You can fly this. Let me start the quadcopter too. You press the button here, and that should start the motors on the quadcopter. But I want to fly route. Okay, this quadcopter 101, I re or restarted the quadcopter. I could not get control of it. Now I've reconnected it. Um, hopefully, the recycling the uh, power on the quadcopter will help me regain control. Opening its app, MJX app, selecting control, and pressing the on off button to bind the quadcopter. And now I am bound, so yeah, I had to recycle the quadcopter's power. Restarting the, the motors, and I'm going to gyro mode right now. We're going to use the gyro sensors. And giving throttle takeoff, and turning on the camera. camera is recording. So yeah, the gyro sensor works with this altitude hold model. Now you know other quadcopters I've flown, you know, their throttles control would be awful, you know, trying to control it with your phone. So in effect you couldn't do much with the phone. But with altitude hold this actually works rather nice. Coming to the left, giving it forward. Coming to the left. Let's send it up a little bit higher. Right about there. So 
So yeah, if you're going to use this, this would be the way to do it, <laughs> using the altitude hold. Stick movement usually is uh, difficult with these, you know, uh, using the um, yaw and pitch and roll inputs are rather bad with these touch screens. But if you're using a gyro sensor, yeah, it kind of works. And I'm recording video with this right now so that you guys can see what the video quality is from this particular quadcopter. Hello. <laughs> Better come back. I don't want to go too far from my phone because I don't know how, how powerful my phone's quadcopter is. But yes, you can control this with the phone. Surprisingly enough, that's my battery. Battery's working well. So let's send it up a little bit higher. Oh, I've got yaw control too. Okay, with that in mind, pointing at the mountains now. So yaw control still works with this, so you can change the direction the quadcopter's pointed if you want to get video of a certain object you can change the yaw and the wind's coming from my left here so I want to point it into the wind again and pointing forward this actually works well you don't need the um, controller with this so altitude hold quadcopters, you can fly them with your quadcopter, but I recommend, or with your phone, but I recommend using the G-Sensor. The G-Sensor works, seems to work really nice with this. Well, there's a thermal there. You see some birds up there flying in the thermal, which means the wind's going to be increasing here. You see off in the distance there, we have a thunderstorm coming our way. A little bit of rain coming down. So in effect, I demonstrated what I wanted to demonstrate. Let's see if we can demonstrate this thing landing. Let's get in front of me again. And press the land button. I pressed, there's a button for landing. Let's see how well it works. I pressed the button. Well, there we go. I'm turning the video off. Okay, that concludes my uh, second demonstration of the MX, MJX X601H. Uh, um, I actually do like the app for flying this quadcopter. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here with another review of the MJX RC. Uh, this is the X, or this is the uh, MJX 601H model. This is the model with uh, both Wi Fi and also Wi Fi FPV and also with um, altitude hold. Now, altitude hold allows flying of this quadcopter very easily using an RC app that comes with this. It, it comes with a real controller if you want to fly it with a real controller. But uh, you can also fly it in several ways with this RC app, either directly uh, using the controls, flying it with your thumbs, or flying it with a G sensor, or drawing a route on your screen and telling you in the quadcopter which direction to fly just by drawing on your screen. And that's the purpose of today's flight. I tried to do it initially uh, yesterday, actually, and I was unsatisfied with what it was doing, um, but I didn't realize that you could change the scale of the drawing to make it fly even further, uh, further distance with your drawings. So that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, I had it set one to one scale yesterday. Today we're going to set it one to six scale. I'll show you, I'll include a little picture on the screen where to set it where to change the um, inputs of the uh, drawing so that you can fly further distances. So that's what we're going to do today. And with that in mind, let's turn on the quadcopter and bind it to my um, phone <laughs> for its flight. Okay, we have the MJX RC app and we're selecting control. We see we got a video screen. Let's start up the, or actually bind the quadcopter by pressing that button there, that binds the quadcopter. We are going to fly using root mode, which is that button there. And actually, I want to back out and start recording too. I'm going to record also. So we're going to select recording. Okay, again, we are bound to the quadcopter and we got video. I'm going to root mode. Now we are going to start up the quad, or start the motors, and then 
give it some throttle to get it in the air. And also I'm going to change this uh, to 1 to 5. Right now it's currently 1 to 1. I want it 1 to 5 to give me maximum movement of the quadcopter with my drawing. Starting the motors. Giving it throttle to get in the air. And drawing a picture. There. Let's try fly to the left right. Let's fly diagonally to the left. So you can actually draw and tell it which way to go. <laughs> Forward. Give it a little more throttle too. Get it up higher. It's interpreting my drawing as telling it which direction to go. Come back here. <laughs> Diagonally pulling it back. I want to go up higher. So it's pretty neat. Flies pretty fast. Okay, let's stop it for a second there. One to five might be a little bit too much telling it which direction to go. So we're going to try one to three instead. Okay, obviously uh, one to five is a little bit too much for that. Uh, let's turn on the recorder again. I don't know if it's going to record or not, but uh, we'll go back to uh, flight mode. Actually, you've got to bind the quadcopter first. We should be bound. And going to our drawing mode. This time I am going to reduce it to 1 to 3. Because 1 to 5 is way too much. And also this time we are going to go up a little bit higher. Starting the motors. That's a better altitude. Okay, go forward. Drawing the line forward. That's better. <laughs> 1 to 3 is more usable. Coming back. Draw to the right, forward, left, and back. Let's see it do this maneuver. Left and back. Okay, draw to the left, forward, right. One left. Supposed to go forward. And then to the right. Come to the right to bring it back to me. Okay, and coming out of that mode, I'll give it a little more throttle. Oh, my battery's probably low, because it landed itself. I must, oh, I must have hit the land button. <laughs> okay, when I was drawing, I must have hit the landing button. It automatically lands when you hit the land button, as you've seen there. So that's one of the things is if you're using the drawing feature, be careful about if you hit the land button, go down button, it will come to a landing. <laughs>